December 1st, 1997, a day that changed many lives here in Kentucky. That's when a student opened fire at a high school in Paducah, killing three people and injuring several more. The gunman now trying to gain parole 25 years later. Daniel Miskell joins us now in studio to tell us what the victim's family members and victims themselves have to say about that. Danielle. Yes, so the boy that you see here was 14 years old at the time that he killed three of his classmates and injured five others. Michael Carneal, the shooter, is now 39 years old and is able to ask for parole because he was sentenced as a minor and the law says he's entitled to it after serving 25 years in prison. But in emotional testimonies today, surviving victims and family members said that the path to justice would be to keep Carneal behind bars. As I write the statement, I am reminded what we have missed since her murder on December 1st, 1997. Chuck and Gwen Hadley are the parents of Nicole Hadley, one 14-year-old student who lost her life at the Heath High School shooting 25 years ago. 39-year-old Michael Carneal is the one who took their daughter's life, and today they fought back against his parole request. He has never shown remorse or taken responsibility for what he's done. I believe the murderer should never be let out of prison and should serve the remainder of his life sentence. Hadley's older sister, Christina Elgood, also spoke about how she found her sister fatally shot in the forehead that day and that Carneal premeditated her sister's murder. Sorry, Nicole walked with Michael at their eighth grade graduation. Michael was not a kid who did not have friends as he's led people to believe. That Michael had asked to date Nicole and she had turned him down. We were sentenced to a life of pain and suffering on that day that, that we lost Nicole. Jessica and Casey and the five others that were shot. And with that, I to this day, I still don't understand why he even has the option of parole. We were not given justice with his sentence. Missy Jenkins Smith, who was left paralyzed from the shooting, has visited Carneal and said she's learned that in recent years, memorabilia promoting Carneal as a serial killer was being sold for profit. There are too many what ifs to assume that he could be responsible enough to take care of himself and to not let his mental illness cause him to harm anyone again. Continuing his life in prison is the only way his victims can feel comfortable and safe without being haunted by the what ifs. However, Holland Holm, the victim who was shot in the head and survived, spoke with compassion. If the board were to grant parole for Michael Carneal, I understand it wouldn't be a walk out of the doors with no strings attached. And I think the man that boy became should get the chance to try to do and be better. Thank you. Now tomorrow, it will be Carnell's turn to make his case for parole with the Kentucky State Reformatory in LaGrange. If the parole board rules against his release, it will then determine how long Carnell will have to wait before his next opportunity to seek parole. Imani, back to you. Tough situation there, Danielle. Thank you.